Resident Evil 7 on the Madhouse difficulty is an intense game mode that captures what I enjoy the most about the Resident Evil series. Strong enemies, unique item placements and needing to use an item in order to save the game, just like in the classic Resident Evils. As difficult as it was on my first playthrough, modern day speedrunners have trivialised the boss fights, making the new game Madhouse speedruns completable in under 90 minutes. In today's video, I'm going to show you just how speedrunners destroy the boss fights to make this 90 minute time possible. Just before the video begins, I want to let you know about one of my partners, GamersUps. They have just, that's the wrong one, they've just released the Emotional Damage Flavor, which is by Stephen He, I think his name is. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Um, so we're going to do a live taste test now and see how it is. As you can see, it's still sealed. This will be a blind taste test, and I'm going to give my honest opinion. I currently take Guacamole Game of Fart 9000. This one here. This is for caffeine. Uh, I take it before the gym. And then for caffeine free, I have the Dragon Fruit Punch. I believe it's called. Have a look. Dragon Fruit Punch, caffeine free. Oh. This with like ice cold water is lovely. So we're going to open this up. I've bloody spilt it, man. Another little scoop as well. Ice cold water. Fill her up. I think this is going to be some kind of strawberry flavor. Flavor. That's what it smells like anyway. Give it a quick shake. All right. I'm guessing strawberry. This is nice. This is really nice. It's, pro it's probably as good as the dragon fruit punch. For me, it's quite sweet, really nice aftertaste, very, very fruity, very fruity. Yeah, it's about as good as the Dragon Fruit Punch, in my opinion. By the time you're watching this video, this flavor will be released. Uh, if you use my link in the description, you'll get a discount and you'll be helping me out as well. But yeah, thank you very much, guys. Uh, enjoy the video. We need to run just a couple of inches into the bathroom and immediately exit and run back down the stairs that we came from. We don't need to touch any buttons at this point. We can press the spacebar to block some of her attacks, but doing so will just slow the fight down and we'll end up taking damage anyway. We run towards Mia when Ethan stands up and we don't need to touch the keyboard again until we regain control of Ethan. Once Ethan is standing, we run into the bathroom, grab the two healing items and position ourselves at Mia's feet, triggering her to get up. Once Ethan gets yeeted through the wall, we pick up the axe, attack her using only the short swings and stepping back out of range each time she goes for an attack. Optimally, we want her to die as close as possible to the broken wall, so that we can pick up the axe afterwards without wasting too much time. On to boss fight number 2 and it's time for the Mia Attic encounter. Luckily we can use the axe from the first fight and save a lot of time. We trigger her spawning by going up the ladder a single step, then immediately coming back down. What I like to do is run into this room, wait for the door to close and that will buffer the perfect distance between Ethan and Mia. I crouch, do two heavy swings and then just keep swinging at her booty, safely staying out of range of the chainsaw. She will eventually die and all I need to do is wait for Jack to punch me and it is optimal to stand in the middle of the room with nothing directly behind you. Time for the first of the three Jack battles in the run. 
The deputy gets his head turned into beans, dropping his Glock, which we pick up, run to the corner to pick up the lockpick, and then open up this toolbox. The toolbox contains the car key, which we need to get inside Ethan's car. Immediately turn around and enter the car, and then spam the action button on the car door to exit it as fast as possible. If we are too slow, Jack will grab us out and it takes a little longer. Pressing against the car, when Ethan gets pushed back slightly, that means Jack can now take damage. We shoot him 6 times, preferably in the head, and then a delayed 7th shot where he starts driving off. The 7th shot should make him crash the car. When Jack manages to get out of the car on fire, I bait him to this side of the garage, dodge his grab attack, and then line myself up with this steel, so that when the car explodes, I will get pushed in that direction. All I need to do now is climb the ladder, witness Jack shoot himself, and that will be the end of the Jack 1 fight. Now this will be the hardest fight yet. Using some enhanced handgun ammo that can easily be crafted, we run into this direction, quick shoot Jack 4 times in the head to expose his weak spot, and then shoot his weak spot another 6 times. Stay out of Jack's way and he will open up the grate containing the chainsaw. Grab it as soon as you can, take a step back when he goes to attack, and crouch under it. Then we need to hit his head with the chainsaw as much as possible until the weak spot is exposed once again. With the weak spot exposed, we get as close as we can and use the chainsaw until he dies. With the difficult jack fight out of the way, it's now time for a much easier fight. Approach the crow key door with the crow key in the inventory, and Marge will spawn. When Ethan stands up, all we need to do is shoot the grenade launcher, followed by two shotgun shells, and then two enhanced handgun ammo into her hand. And she's dead, just like that. With the easy march fight out of the way, the second one is much more difficult. Have the grenade launcher equipped, run up the stairs to spawn her, dodge the grab, and fire the grenade launcher at the window, followed by using two shotgun shells and ten enhanced handgun ammo. Reload the handgun while making your way to this wall, reload the grenade launcher, and then shoot Marge with a single handgun bullet to drop her down. Reload the shotgun, shoot her weak spot twice, and then fire a flame round in between the locker covered in spiders and Marge. Reload the grenade launcher while baiting out an attack from her, and then reload the shotgun while dodging the attack and opening up the locker. Shoot Marge off the wall by shooting her in a weak spot, reload the shotgun, and grab the shotgun shells from the locker. Two more shots in the weak spot and another reload, and you can now craft two additional flame rounds. Shoot her twice in the head with the shotgun, and then fire a flame round on the floor. Reload both the grenade launcher and the shotgun as fast as possible. Shoot two shotgun shells and another flame round. Bait and attack, reload both the grenade launcher and the shotgun once again. Shoot Marge off the wall, fire the last grenade round of this fight, and reload the shotgun for a final time. Shoot those last two shots into her weak spot and finish her off with the handgun. Now for the usually dreaded double fat moulded encounter, but it's actually pretty easy. When the shutter begins to lift open, fire a neuro round and stun both moulded. Then use two shotgun shells on each of their heads, alternating between the two. You can now finish both of them off by using the enhanced handgun ammo. Now for the toughest fight of the run by far, the Jack 3 fight. Before the fight starts, and while waiting for Zoe to complete the serum, you can shoot these two boxes so you don't have to do it during the fight. To start the fight, 
Use one flame round, two shotgun shells and three enhanced handgun ammo to destroy the main head. Move to the right, reloading both the handgun and the shotgun and destroy the leg that is closest to you. Reload the grenade launcher and aim it at the big guy on his back. Reload the grenade launcher once again and then reload the shotgun and Jack will do a projectile vomit, allowing you to pick up these items with ease. Drop down and use the grenade launcher twice on the eye which is on the left side of his chest. This will destroy it and he will drop down, exposing the eye that is on the bottom of his tail. I shoot it with the flame round and finish it off with the enhanced handgun. I reload the handgun and the grenade launcher and use my last flame round on the giant eye, which will destroy it, allowing me to insert the neuro round and slow down Jack. I fire the neuro round at his tail and take out the eye with the enhanced handgun ammo. The eye on his right leg takes 8 handgun bullets to destroy, and then I reload the handgun and destroy the last eye. For the second phase, I step back, shoot another neuro round, fire two shotgun shells and finish him off with the handgun. All that's left to do now is insert the serum, and there is actually only one more boss fight left in this run. Now for the final boss fight. The first phase of the fight is very simple. All I need to do is block the shockwaves that Evie produces and make my way slowly towards her where I can inject her with the serum. When I gain control of Ethan, I grab the ammo in the corner of the room, fire a grenade launcher followed by two shotgun shells and an entire clip of enhanced handgun ammo. Now that I'm on the ground, all I need to do now is wait until I get picked up. Fire two shotgun shells at the tentacle, tank a couple of hits and then destroy the tentacle with a couple more handgun ammo. The Albert spawns in, I can grab it and kill Eevee with 4 shots. And that is how you can make speedrunning Resident Evil 7 on the Madhouse difficulty extremely easy.